Right. So, good afternoon to everyone. My name is Marta Lorenzo, and I'm the chair of the International Committee of ICOM for University Museums and Collections. And I am so happy to be able to initiate a new series of um, episodes, uh, conversations, debates uh, with the specific character. This, the difference about this specific one, this specific series and the others that UMAG has on YouTube is that this one is going to do a zoom in into a, a special topic, into a special project, a special museum, a special, um, I don't know, team uh, exhibition that you, Mark, believes should be better known all over the world. And so to initiate this series, the first episode, I am delighted to have with me Jess Castellotte, who is director of, um, the, let me say the name, the complete name, because sometimes I, I only say the short name, <laughs> the Yemisi uh, Shailon Museum of Art of Pan Atlantic University in Lagos, Nigeria. We also have coming in and out, it's not on purpose, <laughs> but he's coming back. <laughs> Michael, what, what's the, the name of Michael, the last name? Oh, yeah. Mike Osegale, and he's here with us. Osegale. Osegale. And so thank you so much for your time. I'm delighted to have you here. And uh, perhaps, Jess, we could start with you introducing a little bit about yourself and Michael, introducing Michael, what he does and so on. And then we can move on to uh, the, the, the museum. <laughs> Well, uh, I'm Spanish uh, national, been here in Nigeria now for 34 years. I 34. came 34. So I'm uh, a Spanish Nigerian or a Nigerian Spanish. And I came as an architect to work as an architect and project manager. I did that for quite a good number of years. Then little by little, I went into the arts I started organizing exhibitions, um, working in, in organizations, institutions, foundations related to the arts, helping artists. In 2010, I published a book. Uh, I did a study of Nigerian contemporary art in Lagos private collections. So I studied how Nigerian collectors collect. It's a very interesting book. I, I visited close to 40 collections in Lagos. When I tell these people outside wow. Nigeria, I think, but are there 40 connections, art collections in Lagos? So of there course. Are. Then I continue. Perhaps, I, sorry to interrupt, but perhaps you can give us the reference of your book and we will put here in the description in YouTube below so that can people, so people can eventually even buy. I don't know if it's for sale, if it's, there's a PDF available, whatever. You send us the okay. reference, okay? Yeah. Okay, I will put it now when we break a moment. Then I did two more. I did two more books on other artists. Then I did one, I realized that the need collectors have to, to professionalize or to improve the way they practice uh, collecting. So I wrote a manual for collectors. Now I'm working on another book. I went back to school in Spain. I did first a master's in art history a few years ago and last year, Actually, I, I defended it last year, but it was uh, awarded this year, this 2020. I finished my PhD in art history in Madrid. Oh, and, uh, okay. <laughs> so less than a year ago, I uh, knew. Then, Congratulations. <laughs> so, uh, um, now I'm not, I don't know exactly what I am. I'm not an architect yet, or still, but uh, I'm in the middle. I'm the director of a museum in the, uh, in a university in Lagos, and, um, and a very lucky person, a very fortunate person to have the opportunity of contributing to something that is a real need, uh, yeah. not only in Nigeria, it's in the continent. Uh, yeah. Lagos is a city with over 20 million people. It's crazy. 20 I've million. It's like and, on uh, my list of, uh, it's on my list of cities that I would love <laughs> to not die, to not die without <laughs> visiting. 
because they said that it's only for the brave, but uh, yes. So, but 20 million, we don't have museum. Well, there is a national museum. The moment is not uh, its best. Yeah. It's there. It was course, created even before independence, mm -hmm. but, um, but uh, there is a real need. So this, this is a small contribution, but I think it's important and real, I hope, we hope. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, I think I'm fortunate to, to be on this. Now, yeah. we are starting from zero. Uh, the first thing was to build a team. Then is when Michael came. He comes from, from the arts, but not from the visual arts. He comes from choreography and uh, performance, wow. performing arts. It's Exciting. Yes. <laughs> and, um, Michael, can so you tell he, us a little bit? Tell can us. you tell us a little bit more about yourself? Can you tell us a little bit more about yourself? How did you come to this fantastic museum to meet Jess and uh, to the Pan Atlantic University? How did it happen? Yes, um, it's uh, it's an interesting story. Okay, growing up, um, I have a I had a background in um, visual arts. Um, I used to draw and paint a lot, even to competitive levels, and I would actually win. And then I discovered the performing arts, and then I took that up. So I had both in my hands, and by the time I was done with the school, um, I'm a science student, so I studied zoology. I'm in the Ooh. university. Yeah. <laughs> but I, <laughs> oh, my God. What a stratigraphy of the learning. Incredible. Yeah. But um, by the time I was done with school, I knew I wanted to work in the arts. Um, Right. Any minimum anymore when I went with the performing arts. So I spent yeah. Um, yeah. the past 10 years working in the performing arts. Um, I worked as an instructor, as a choreographer, as a creative director. Um, in that time, also, I got opportunities that helped me to um, build in the, in the area of um, project management, um, events, um, art projects, community projects. Um, so that was where I started to build in my managerial um, abilities. Um, in the presence of this, I met a, a friend, you know, a mutual friend of mine and um, Jesse's who knew about my history and my connection mm -hmm. with the visual arts. And um, right. yeah, he put us in touch and the rest is history. So, and the rest is, you, you never stopped working together, <laughs> right? Yes. <laughs> now it's fantastic. Jess, tell us more about, let's, let's focus on the museum. Let's now zoom in on the museum. Can you, can you share with us uh, I will your... Share. Yes, I will share now a few images uh, and, and a few ideas. Uh, and basically, um, what I will do is I will try to answer five questions um, that I think that could be of interest. But if anybody has any other question, uh, they, they are welcome. Yeah. Uh, I didn't mention it before, but um, I had a special and in a special situation because I designed the museum that now I direct. I think this is unheard of. I designed it as an architect. Before I was the director of the museum, I was an architect. So I did several of the buildings in the university. I designed several of the buildings in the university. And then, uh, so this museum, uh, I cannot blame the architects or anything because I'm, I'm no. the one who designed it. So this is, uh, this is the You're first- the only uh, you're the only museum director in the world that will never be able to complain <laughs> about the architect. So, okay, this was the first um, proposal presented to the university, um, first phase of a museum. This is what we, we have there now. As you can see, the color has improved a little bit and uh, it's, um, so it's there. It's not a big museum. It's around 1,500 square meters of display area but uh, it's designed in a way that it can grow and hopefully it will grow. We have a space and um, the way it's designed, it will allow to, to grow incrementally without disturbing the, the functioning of the museum. Sure. Now, these are the five questions that I, I briefly, I don't want to spend much time um, on this, but briefly answer these five questions. What is the, the museum, the YSMA, the Jemichi Shilon, um, so how do you Shilon, say? Not Shilon. Okay, Shilon. exactly. Je Sorry. Shilon. No but problem. Usually, uh, it's, it's okay. But usually, what is the brand that you want to project socially? Is it the YM YSMA that you usually YSMA, say? YSMA, yes, because the other one is a little bit. Or in some cases, we, we simply say the Shilon Museum. 
So okay. it's either the Shillong Museum or the YSMA. Okay. So um, now, so what is what is it? What do we want to achieve as a museum? As you know, and all of you surely know very well, better than, than me, that uh, museums can fulfill many purposes. Uh, what do we want to achieve with this museum? What do we have? Well, in terms of art and resources, and what do we do? Oh, what avenues, what initiatives do we, are we planning? Because really we are starting. And how are we governed, managed, and funded? I wanted to explain a little bit because of the special characteristics of our museum. Mm -hmm. um, wow. Uh, I have prepared, a, a, in this presentation, each one of them, I tried to put a photograph of an artwork in the collection of the museum. Wow. Uh, first, let me say, the Jemishi Shilo Museum is an art museum. Uh, so it, it's not an ethnology museum. So though some objects, artifacts could struggle both, um, but it's an art museum. An art museum of a university that is a Pan-Atlantic university, it's a private university uh, in the outskirts of Lagos. And Lagos being a 20 uh, million people city, the outskirts means we are in kilometer 52 <laughs> in the city. <laughs> so really, um, <laughs> Lagos, yeah. it, it, it's, it's spread, spread. Eh? it's spread. It's spread. It's, so it's not like um, it's not like Sao Paulo where no. there's the tall buildings. It's spread. Well, right? there are a few, but it's a spread. So kilometer fifty-two, not living the city. Okay. Now a little bit, very briefly, the, the history. Well, by the way, this is a, a knock terracotta uh, before Christ. We are very fortunate to have few. The most important ones are in uh, Paris, Evrani, British Museum. Uh, mm -hmm. Berlin, Vienna, but we are lucky to have a couple of them. And, uh, this started when in 20, 2011, I set up in the university. At that time I was in the governing council of the university. So I've been architect doing some things there. And I set up a, a virtual museum, just images, uh, a nice website with images. Then little by little, we started conceptualizing, defining, um, what a museum could do and could be within the university, a university museum. Then in 2015, after approaching several of the top collectors, luckily, especially since the time when I wrote the book on collectors, I, I'm quite close to, to many of them. So Prince Shilon said, yes, this fits my, my long-term plans. Um, and then I'm ready to donate 1,000 artworks and I'm ready to give some money toward the establishment of this museum in the university. So we signed, or they signed an agreement, University and Prince Shilon. So the museum was established. We started the design uh, process. We started construction as soon as we could in 2016. And then last year, at the end of the year, we finished the, the museum. Here I see 2019 opens to the public, but really it was in January. So we have been open for two months. Then. On, yeah, March and then COVID. 23rd, on March 23rd, we had to close because yeah. of COVID. It must have been we such have... a frustration, you know, you open and then two months and then you, oh well, my God. But, yeah. um, okay, so uh, we are now, we have reopened, though not fully, but we are reopened. Just briefly, this is uh, for our Prince Shilon. Arguably, he's the, the biggest collector in Africa. He yeah. has a collection of, of over 7,000 works. Yeah. So he gave 1,000. It's mainly, almost exclusively, Nigerian or West African. So mm -hmm. he gave those works. We cannot display all of them. but um, And then mm -hmm. he committed uh, to give money towards the building and to sustain, to, to give some funds to help sustain in the museum for the first 10 years. It's a commitment that's, on his part. So That's it, amazing. That's, that's amazing. That's amazing. Really. It's very generous. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's yeah. very generous and, and, and far sighted because many times we, we used to talk and I say, What is going to happen to you to your collection when you die? And, and he was clear, I want this. And then we, anyway, so Prince yeah. Shilon. Wow. Um, now, okay. 
what do we want to achieve? I think we have like a dual mission. We are a university museum, that's first. But we are more because of the needs, the very urgent and great needs that we have in our community. There are no, not only community museums, but community cultural um, spaces, institutions that can provide these services to the community. So we are more than, a, than the usual university museum. Art right. museum, especially mm -hmm. in the American, so in the sense have, in the American sense, yeah, yeah, yes, mm -hmm. like a, a dual mission, I think. Yes. Uh, so not exclusively. Um, okay, so what is this is the way we have it uh, defined is to serve. We are at the service uh, of what of audiences, as I will say later on. We are absolutely audience center. For us, the most important thing are the people who will come, who come, who hopefully will benefit. So the impact of people is central for us. Not that we don't care about the artworks, we care. Not that we don't care about the artists, we care. Not that we don't care about research, we care. Not that we don't care about documentation, we care. Not that we don't care about the tourists, we care. But sure. at the center is audiences. And doing two things, advanced knowledge, creating knowledge about Nigerian art and offering programs, activities that enable people not only, uh, and this is also a feature of our museum, to learn not only about art, but through art. Mm. And this is something that from the beginning we are very clear. It's not mm. only about art, it's through art and right. with art. Okay, um, now wow. we're in the process. Okay, this is a sculpture we got last week um, it's a masquerade done by one of the major sculptors in the country. On the right is the cover of the strategic plan that we are about mm -hmm. to approve. The Supervisory wow. Council hopefully will approve now in the last meeting of the year, at least in a few days. And then we start 2021, 24, 24 with a clear strategic plan. That I think it has taken us, we are lucky having had COVID it has given yeah. us time to think, yeah. to talk, mm -hmm. to, to strategize, to, to define where we want to go, how we want to go, how do we want to achieve it, what are the goals, targets, objectives, etc. So this is the strategic plan that we are about to, to public. We will make it also public in the website, and this there will be something that will explain what, what we want to achieve. Um, now, a question th that is that we keep asking ourselves and Michael in Michael talks and the other people in there working with us. We are, we are a small team. We are only seven people at the moment in the museum. And they know that regularly uh, I come there and I almost, now it's almost like a joke is I ask them, why are we here? Can you answer? And they, they know the answer. Why are we here? Because we want to serve the audiences, the university, and we want to achieve this. Okay, right. so this idea, we repeat it and repeat it. Why are we mm -hmm. here? Mm -hmm. Let's not yeah. lose sight yeah. of why are we really here? It's yeah. not to make money, obviously. It's not to entertain yeah. tourists. There are very few tourists here. Yeah. So yeah. what are we here for? What do we want to achieve? This has been a regular um, discussion or a regular consideration. This is a particularly Beautiful. important significant are historically significant is probably one of the first portraits done in a, in a figurative western style easel painting by a nigerian artist uh, even before independence this is a, a truly important work that we have there um, wow. now so we want to use art to talk for instance about history now the, our first program is not about art but about history is for secondary schools uh, students, in, especially from the communities around, to mm -hmm. help them learn about Nigerian history using right. art. For instance, we take this work and say, what happened at that time? Yeah. How was Nigeria yeah. organized before there was Nigeria? Yeah. Nigeria the way we knew it as an independent country. So yeah. learning with art and through art. Object-based object, object -based learning, object-based engagement, uh, this that's, you is that's okay. you will. I, I'm going to mention it later on. That's exactly uh, what leads us 
Okay, we, we have four pillars. Uh, when we started the strategizing and thinking, they say, well, what are the pillars on which we want to build this museum? Because everything is new here. Mm -hmm. And locally, the university has given us, uh, they, they have allowed us to define it. Of course, they have the authorities, the, the supervisory council, as the governing body has to approve and all that, but they have given us a wonderful room for us to, to explore. So we have taken these, these four pillars. Audiences first, the collection, because mm -hmm. we start with a very serious collection, then mm -hmm. long-term that's sustainability, and then being inserted in networks, being not an isolated project. Relationships are also important. So these are like the four, what we have called key strategic areas uh, mm -hmm. that on which to build. Or pillars. Mm -hmm. Since mm -hmm. I'm an architect, I think this is appropriate. Now, uh, let me, this is something that we are now defining uh, our current goals, the, the six major goals we want to make, because there is a great need to make the, the museum a, a cultural hub for the Lagos community. We want to serve the community. Uh, we want to, to serve the community outside Lagos, and that means having a serious, relevant, attractive presence in the net. We, so we are creating digital resources now. Then the collection that is not well preserved, not well documented. So we are in the process now of digitalizing every single item. We, are, we have mm -hmm. gone quite far, documenting it as much as we can, but it's still a long way. But we are determined to, to work seriously on the collection first. Then then the impact on people and beyond art. Issues like critical thinking. We think that yeah. we are in a very good position to do this. You are. To, to, to offer a service first to the, to the small university commission, uh, community, and this is small, but then the larger community. Mm -hmm. Then we have it, this is, it, is, it has to be there, to ensure the long-term sustainability and not only financial sustainability, but for instance, building a team. Building a team is very much, again, at the center of, personally, uh, what I'm trying to achieve. Uh, and, and luckily, the remaining six uh, members of the team are far, far younger than me, uh, less, a little bit less experienced, but we need to develop skills, competencies. We have to build a team. So, and this is a priority if we want this project to, to succeed. It's not about, definitely not about me. Uh, and if we want this to, to last, we need a team that can run it well, competently. Yeah. And, and then yeah. finally, broadening relationships. Sure. We are looking But wait, 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 wait. Go back. Tell us a little bit more about the sculpture. This is sculpture. The, the sculpture in wood. Oh, this is by Elabore Mokpa. Eh? Uh, is one of the early modernist um, African uh, artists. Uh, is one that he was trained in the Western um, style and he attended a school where he learned the usual curriculum of, of an art school, but um, he came from an environment where there were many carvers. He, he came from Benin and then he incorporates some references clearly modern. This is not traditional African, but at the same time, fully um, linked to traditional modes. Traditions, yeah. yeah. Yes, so um, this is Ebony Wood. He is an extraordinary piece. I don't remember now the date when he made it, probably in the 70s. This is, this is quite extraordinary that it was done in, I don't Incredible. remember now exactly, probably in the 70s. Incredible. Um, well, this one is a, uh, probably, we haven't been able to date it, but it's between 16th, 17th century bronze from Benin. Again, the wow. best ones, and there's a very similar one in the British Museum, yeah. and many in, in Berlin and in Vienna. But um, the, this is an extraordinary piece, 17th, 17th century. Mm -hmm. uh, when, when they discovered these pieces, the, the first Europeans who saw them, they thought, well, this cannot have been done here. From where yeah. did they bring this? But no, yeah. even before. Anyway, so yeah. what you were mentioning before, yes, this is central to us, object-based learning. We want Absolutely. to start from an object, 
and from there move on and from there start and help people think about other issues from where the, you know we don't have serious copper mines in Nigeria from where did they get copper to make bronze in 17th century Nigeria exactly mm -hmm. then you start talking about trading routes and then circulation and circulation many. circulation of people and materials and and then you just say, okay, if we were getting copper, what were we giving? And with whom were we? And how? Was it through the sea with Europe? Yes. Was it through the Sahara with Northern Africa? Yes. What were we? So if just this artwork starts a conversation yeah. on economy, on technology, on history, on, on, on customs, on, on beliefs, on religion, on politics, on social organization. This is what we want to do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so we are, and I, we want to stress it, an audience center museum using object-based methodologies. But mm -hmm. not that we don't care about uh, the artworks, but we are not a fully, uh, this is not like other museums that are about the collection. This is about mm -hmm. the people who will, even the artists, we are in very good relation. It is, it's fascinating since we opened the museum, if you knew the number of artists, some of them senior artists, who have come to us and have said, can I donate a word to the museum? Oh. So in many, in many cases, we have to say, no, we don't have a space. We, we cannot display it. There is no point. Uh, and in, in, keeping in the store takes space, and we have to ensure it. We, but um, so yeah, audience center museum. Now, uh, now, what is what we have? This is the next question. We have a collection. It's almost exclusively Nigerian art. It goes from some terracotta, from the northern part, from the sub-Saharan uh, part of the country that were made before Christ or the first centuries, to works produced two years ago or last year. We have a present the 1,000 words that Prince Shilon gave us, plus other ones that the university had, plus other ones that are coming already. Mm -hmm. So the collection is growing. We, the museum is small, only 1,500. Um, I see a spelling mistake here. Um, okay, 1,500 square meters. Okay, this is one view inside. Um, it's an open, flowing, single space. Okay, uh, this um, now. Wow. <laughs> who is the architect? Inside. Who is this? Uh, the who is the architect? <laughs> <laughs> okay, now. Uh, let me tell you a little bit. We have a framework for the governance of the museum. We are part of the university and the museum, though it is named after Prince Shilon. It's not Prince Shilon's museum. He doesn't own it. Uh, it belongs to, to the university, but is governed by a supervisory council set up jointly by the by Yamishi Shilon and some other people from the community and from the university. Then there is an advisory board that plays a very important role in, in advisory support, fundraising, external relations uh, that is made of, of prominent people. And then we have a small team, seven, not, not including security uh, facilities, right. etc. But of, of the team managing the museum, we are seven at the moment. Um, now, from where do we get our income? Um, we get this piece is extraordinary in bronze. Uh, Incredible. Ben Osawe. Um, again, this is uh, he died quite some time ago. Is one of the early modernists. Uh, so people who were between tradition. His father was a carver between tradition and modernity. So they incorporate. Um, so they, they, this. Space is, is extraordinary. Uh, it's a bird mm -hmm. called Sankofa bird. Um, okay. And from where do we get? Um, now, the university is a new university. The university doesn't have funds for the museum. So when I propose this to the university, said, okay, can you get the funds? Can you get the expertise? Can you get the artworks? Can you get the museum? Can you say, well, I don't know, but. But so at the moment, we need to source all our funds. Uh, we don't have funds on the university. It's a challenge 
this is not uh, the best recipe for sustainability. That's why as I was saying, and we are working hard on that, on transforming, on moving from this where we are now to where we need to be. At the moment, mm -hmm. only 17% of our income comes from earned income through activities, programs, etc. For the museum, most of it comes through contributed income. Contributed funding, uh, from the first day, I, I had it very clear, we want to create an endowment fund. Even if we don't have a cent, even if we don't have any money, even if it, it will take 50 years before the endowment fund can generate enough money to, to, to sustain or contribute significantly to the museum. And we have started. And this we are very proud, all of us in the museum. We have yeah. started very little money, very little. But mm -hmm. we have started and we will continue growing. Then membership, we have just started a membership scheme from big patrons to ordinary individual patrons members to have a, a broad support. Then major gifts, we are aiming uh, at uh, getting major gifts, then corporate and uh, individual sponsors. And then again, we have put it as a priority to go all out to obtain grants and support from institutions, foundations, etc. So this is these are the channels. Roughly is 20% for each one of them. Uh, this piece that you see below um, is it was made in the it's an think, animal. Most likely is a shell. A shell um, in bronze used through the Sirpardi method, 16th century. It was in a burial ground. This is uh, there are only two like this as far as we know, um, one is in the National Museum in Lagos. This is the other one. This is a, a very important piece that we have. Uh, it's not very big. It's less than 30 centimeters. But uh, you see, could see the detail, the, 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 the craftsmanship, the, the, the skill in casting this is extraordinary. OK, so yeah, the funding sources, roughly 20% for each one of these five that we mentioned. The, the founding patron, patron that's Jamie Shilon, Prince Shilon, uh, roughly this for now, the advisory board members, other patrons, corporate sponsorships. This is the model and this is where we are working. Um, and, and this is what we hope to, to achieve. And, and I finish, um, really, I, I, I could go on and on, but um, I know. You, you told me 30. To 30 to 40, I, no, I, but I have my... so many questions. I have questions, okay. and maybe the audience too. We will see. We'll see. Go so, on, go on. Uh, this is uh, the questions that we keep asking ourselves, and this is what guides us what difference, what impact do we want to have? Because we want to have an impact, we want to help, we want to serve, we, we want to, to reach people. And what positive change can we make? We are not going to change. And Nigeria has over 200 or pro close to 200 million people. We are not going to, to reach even a fraction of this. But what can we do on individuals? Uh, now, for instance, we are pushing to start in January, and almost certainly we will start in January a program for secondary schools on history. And we are, we are getting sponsors to pay the cost of bringing people, uh, young people from poor, rural um, community schools mm -hmm. to, to bring them, keep them the whole day in the museum, give them lunch, yeah. uh, entertain them, teach yeah. them, challenge them, um, and hopefully they will taste something and, uh, and hopefully will have, I don't know if a big impact, perhaps not at the beginning, but if we are consistent and we sustain this, I think we, we can have an impact. And, and this, is, this is where we are. And um, yeah. here I stop. It's great. This is a, a work done by a friend, an artist, a Nigerian Finnish. This work was done three or four years Amazing. ago. Amazing. So, okay, if you have, if anybody has any question and I can answer, well, I, do. I will answer it. Okay. You have thousands. I you will, want me uh, to, to stop the sharing or I leave? Yes, it? yes, it would be nicer. Look, Jess, it's so fascinating um, to see. Well, first of all, I browsed through the website, but I was not aware of the beauty of the some 
objects, they are absolutely out of this world, you know, it's out of this world. And you know so much about them. So you already have collected, that's my first question. You already have researched, obviously, and collected stories about those objects because you obviously can talk about them. You can say there was an object that you mentioned the dimensions by heart. I mean, crazy, like 31 centimeter or whatever. So my question is, did this documentation, this information about the objects come already from Prince Shilon, or was it already at the museum that research was developed? So did he have documentation that accompanied the donation or was it something that you did already as you worked in the museum together with your team? This is something that we did. Mm -hmm. Luckily, one of the seven uh, members of the team is uh, Jessica. She is uh, a graduate from the leading art school in Nigeria. She studied art history, and her role is research and documentation. So wow. from the day one, she has been researching on artworks. And from day one, we want to create resources. So we started, and they are already online. It's called, they are called artwork information sheets. So this is a four page PDF. We will put the link, we will put the link below. Uh, perhaps Michael, who hopefully is still listening there, uh, can put it if you don't mind, or I will yeah. put it. Yeah. So we already have 10. So this is a four page PDF on one artwork. And we have given ourselves a target of publishing and putting three online, one per week. Wow. And uh, so we are not fully achieving one per week, but we are aiming, working hard. Yes. For some of them, yeah. we, have, we are asking art historians, commissioning mm -hmm. art historians, mm -hmm. could you write a simple uh, for the general public? It's not a, a, an academic yeah, article. Yeah, not academic, academic. right, I understand. No, it's, yeah. not, it's, yeah. it's for the general public explaining the significance, the history of this artwork. This mm -hmm, is mm -hmm. online already. Uh, yeah, and yeah. this is, it will take us years. But again, we are consistent. And it will never end. Uh, look, yeah, Jess, and, and, and documenting the, and, a collection never ends, you know, really, because you always have layers and different perspectives and other people will come and say, have a different uh, idea about uh, new materials, new research techniques about the materials for dating and so on. So. It's, it's, it's never going to end, you know, documentation, but it's great the work that you have done already. It's, it's it is, and we are clear and having one person yeah. specifically, yeah, just focus on that. That's her job, that's what she is yeah. doing, and engaging other uh, historians to support mm -hmm. externally mm -hmm. the research. Yeah. Fantastic. Another question that I have is about this problem of sensing the community of impact on the community, okay? So I think that it's my museum also, it's, uh, every museum would like to have more impact. You know, it comes in every document, reference, strategy. You understand what I mean? But it's something that is difficult uh, to yeah. engage the community, unless they come in the school groups, okay. I think that's easier because you can prepare and work with the, the, the teachers and so on. But how do you motivate? I imagine that Nigerian didn't check this, but I imagine that it's very young demographics, right? So young people um, and who are, who are probably have some expectations about art. Uh, they have no idea really sometimes because I'm not sure if it's, uh, uh, so how do you, but at the same time, the demographics that are in your immediate surroundings how do you measure and how do you sense the needs and the voices of those communities and integrate them in your programs? How do, do you have established relationships with some NGOs or you know, community leaders or organizers or how do you do that? Uh, we haven't done it yet, really. Mm -hmm. But we are clear, say our first, the first one has to be the, the immediate, the most immediate yeah. community, the university. We haven't mm -hmm. succeeded yet. Absolutely. So Absolutely. we are focusing now on university, on lecturers and faculty. Yes. 
even before the students, because yeah. they still see, now it's new, some of them have not come in, oh, like a, an attraction or a, yeah, something to go and of visit. Course. Okay, I have been there, that's it. No, it's not like this. It's no. not, I have seen it, that's it. So now no. we are approaching them individually, one by one, say, what do you do? What could we do together? What project could your students do related to this? So for instance, the other day I was talking to, to the head of the department in information systems and technology. Say, so, okay, you, you ask your students to produce applications. Could you give yeah. some of them a project to do an application that is the, the museum? So the museum? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Then, okay, can we go beyond that? Not that, that we are going to tell them about the museum, but in which course can we work? Yeah. yeah. In a course, in the and curriculum. At the, at the same so, time, you uh, contribute you contribute to the first mission of the university, so the teaching and eventually research. So all this takes time to build these networks and to, but but that will eventually also give you agency and the knowledge on how to uh, progress to the more, dif more difficult terrain of uh, the community and how, because you really have to listen to them, right? What, what are their needs and their expectations and, and um, yeah, yeah, and it's diverse, right? It's very diverse, the interests and the, the age, how we, it's, it's something complicated, right? So the university is number one, starting with lectures of faculty, then we want we have identified a group we want see we cannot reach everybody and yeah, another yeah. group that is art teachers in the Lagos community in the secondary school, school yeah. art teachers what can we offer so we are planning can we offer programs to them yeah can we can we create resources that they can use in the schools yeah related to the museum but what can we do to strengthen then to, to, to empower them, yeah. to yeah. facilitate their work. How can we contribute? And, mm -hmm. and how mm -hmm. can we engage them? Uh, first they have to come and see the museum and then, um, so these are two key, small groups, but key Stakeholders. now at the beginning. Stakeholders, so yeah, at the beginning, yeah, yeah. Then the schools, obviously, and, and for those ones who already have programs, and then, um, yeah. We will because the collection, you know, it's so, uh, it kind of sets the imagination on fire, right? Mm -hmm. All the objects, the materials, the different dates when they were made, the relation to history, but not only, you know, with creativity and human ingenuity and all that. So there's so much really that can be inspiring uh, for yeah. young students to, suddenly at the university. I don't know if there's a, a school of arts at the University of the Pan Atlantic. No, no? Mm -hmm. nothing. That, that's a disadvantage, but since our goal is, is much broader than teaching art, yeah, exactly. it's not exactly. a real problem. Some people say, but how can you have a, an art museum if there is no faculty of art or fine exactly. arts? I say, yeah. we can. Because we in the our US, audience is wider. Yeah, in the US, I can see that you were very much. I was going to ask you if you had a particular, you know, very specific inspiration, but I can see that your um, cadre, your um, framework is clearly North American because of the yeah. idea of memberships and the way the management is organized. So, my, another question that I had was, was this did you have any, <coughs> sorry, not COVID? Uh, I'm thirsty. <laughs> Did you have any inspiration, uh, any particular person, any particular article you read, any particular, you know, uh, museum personality or museum specifically that uh, inspired you and motivate you to organize and the, your team the way you did? Well, I have in the when I was doing the, the doctorate research in the past three years, uh, the topic I selected was the art world as a social system. So it's, it's, it's between sociology and art history. How, how does the system work um, as a system? So I, I read quite a lot uh, about it. 
and I have um, I have got quite a few books, and I'm in touch, especially with. Um, I, I have been trying for a good number of years. Let's say um, in the art world, I, I am in touch with people because I have been writing. Because let's say, for instance, uh, art fairs. So uh, Cape Town, yeah. I have gone yeah. to the, uh, Johannesburg, I have gone there. Uh, 154 in London, go there. Yeah. 154 New York, go there. Aka in yeah. Paris, go there. So to, to be in, in touch with people. So I have a, a broad network, network of people with whom I, I on a personal, one-on-one, -on -one, yeah. not yeah. yet institutional. Yeah. And that's something that I'm trying to move that's beyond another the thing. personal. Yeah. Yeah, from yeah. the from the personal to the yeah. institutional, so but there is. Um, then uh, I was lucky that now it's two years ago, thanks to Larian Frances, I participated in a program, a very interesting program uh, organized by then in, in France, uh, where they I selected what I wanted to do and uh, they organized it for me. So I said I want to. I want to visit during 10 days museums in France and talk to the people in charge mainly of audiences. So I was That's there. when you met Sebastian. You went to Strasbourg. Sebastian in Strasbourg. Strasbourg. Sebastian. So, yeah. yeah. Um, of, obviously, there are very, in continental Europe, as you know better than me, there are few university art museums. There are yeah. wonderful yeah. science museums, yeah. and, but few. Uh, very few. It's more very a North thing. American, North American. You know, it's a North American thing. Because and it's already, precisely, it's precisely related to the donations too. Huh? The, the, the idea, the tradition of giving donations to the university. So in that respect, your museum, your, the, yeah. the museum is also uh, very much uh, North America in its it's, essence. Uh, fully. Because you don't have that in Europe. You don't have donations of big donors to museums and to, you don't have that. It's unfortunately, unfortunately. So, so the collections, yeah, the, sorry. So just to conclude, so the collections that you have are the ones that are generated from teaching and research activities, you know, herbaria, yeah. zoology, and uh, that kind of thing. So, but um, yeah, so uh, can I ask a question to Michael? Michael, I want to ask you something. How do you feel, is it, how do you feel about this, uh, um, these ideas, do you, do you feel inspired? You really, do you think it's feasible? How do you go about in your daily life to implement? Uh, it's, it's, it's not easy all the time huh, to achieve this, um, these objectives for a new museum, brand new museum. You cannot go out, you cannot have visitors and so on. So how do you feel personally this, uh, the role that the museum has to play, both in the university and in uh, this is Nigerian society. Um, yeah, it's it's interesting. First off, it's a challenge, and uh, yeah. personally, that's why I took the job because it's a challenge. Um, yeah. I've, in previous employments, I was used to working either in a startup or in a, yeah. a new project or building a new department from scratch. So yeah, it was something that was exciting uh, to want mm -hmm. to be a part of. Um, impact, yes, this is very possible. And I have seen that um, yeah. over time because there, there are communities who, who need this. Now, it will take us a while to get re to, to reach um, through to all of them or most of them or of to course. the schools, for instance, or to the university of community. Um, it's going to be an in-house thing first. It has, to be, it has to be something that we build organically from within, from mm -hmm. ourselves, from the team, being clear about what we want to do. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I, yeah. And I feel your, ex, your energy, you know, I feel energized by just, just by talking to you. I feel that yeah. you are very, you're highly motivated. I, of course, it's difficult. Of course, everything is really starting. And of course, you had COVID at the beginning, you were really excited, but then you had <laughs> Yeah. anti-climatic i know but you're really motivated you have clear ideas about where to go and i even if it's a small team you know what sometimes it's better to have a small team you know not yeah mm -hmm. because you're freer team, small team if you have many, a big museum skills yeah yeah if you have yeah and if you have a big museum if you want to introduce change in a big museum it will take you 20 years it, it's not gonna <laughs> happen 
you know. It's big. It takes time, lots of iner- inertia, you know. Whereas you, the seven of you together, you know, you can be very experimental. You can be innovative. You can, uh, you have freedom, you know. It's kind of, I, I envy you uh, totally. <laughs> Everybody puts their hands on everything. Exactly. Everybody knows everything. <laughs> I'm exactly. becoming an uh, art historian already. Uh, so. yeah. <laughs> I know, so, yeah. I know, I know. Interesting. It's a very interesting experience, yeah. It's amazing, it's amazing. So let me see if we have, I'm not following the um, YouTube, but let's see if we have, at the moment we don't have any questions, but I have more questions, obviously. <laughs> uh, I was going to, Shoot. just to confirm something. So the collection is not closed and is not in the sense that you are going to there is a collection development you you want to you want to be representative of nigerian art of all periods and and this collect, this donation is really just the kickoff so you're going to go in different directions uh, contemporary artists but also um, historic art uh, from uh, past centuries, I suppose. So that's the idea, right? But you don't yeah. have space. You will do that only when you have more space. This... But we are, the, the approach that we, this is a problem. We thought, how do we approach it? So we decided that we are do, going to do, um, we are going to rotate the works. So we are having um, some permanent display, but we have rotating uh, exhibitions. Yeah. So now we yeah. have two exhibitions. One is on materiality, showing yeah. how different artists, different periods, different spaces, places in Nigeria have used different materials to produce art. Uh-huh. And, and it makes it very interesting. And the other one is... The, the geography, activity. the geography of materials, right? The idea that different... Because Nigeria is so big, you know, it's for us like Portugal, okay? Portugal is like this. <laughs> So uh, kind of a scale thing, it's, there's so many Nigerias, I imagine. And, right? the, and the diversity culturally yeah. from, from, from northern, northern parts of Nigeria, this, um, of the Sahel, really, yeah. the yeah. Sahara, to yeah. the thick tropical forest in the Niger Delta, yeah, it's to, to areas close to, to the plateaus of Cameroon that are yeah. very different in, in all respects. So, yeah. It's a very diverse, uh, complex uh, country. Yeah, so, and yes, sometimes problematic, we... huh? Sometimes problematic, right? Sometimes the problematic. Most times. <laughs> Most times. So, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. uh, we, we intend to rotate. We are working already in the exhibitions 2021-22. One of them is going to be on women artists. Wow, very trying, good trying to mm-hmm. Trying to see how and bring out the, the richness, yeah. the complexity, and, yeah. and uh, mm-hmm. the, many of them are not known, but of there course. are, there yes, have been. So we are working now on the definition, of the curatorial aspects of the that exhibition, but this will come later. Yeah, yeah. And uh, um, if you had, I'm going to do that kind of question, like, if you had all the money in the world, okay, all the money. <laughs> what would be your wish? What would you like to that money to acquire at this moment, at this particular moment? And then I will ask also Michael. Think about it, okay? I'll get back. I'll get to you too. What do you think, Jeff? More <laughs> objects, more space, another building <laughs> that you commission to yourself. No, that, that, the next one, no, not me. Not me. <laughs> that will be <laughs> when I have to sign the code for agreement with the code of ethics. There are a few things. Of anyway, course. So um, I'm not that sure I will ask for an artwork uh, because for, we have enough artworks. No, not that yeah. we will not be glad to receive some important pieces that we don't have. Yeah. There are gaps, yeah. important gaps. But, but my main concern are people. So, he would say, how can I train, how can I spend my team and build my team? That's the priority. One, then how can I reach more people? For that, I need more space. I wish I had now a couple of, of teaching or learning spaces, but not a classroom, 
at the spaces that yeah. can accommodate them, more flexible. Yeah. 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 yeah, that, that yeah. I can then I would try, like to invest if I have more money on developing a proper um, lab to restore, maintain, and not only for us, there's such a big need in the country, in the continent, that I wish yeah. we could contribute and, yeah. and offer this to other people, to, to create a center or a lab or whatever, an institution that can help other museums, other museum professionals. So I think I will put a few things before uh, the artworks. Before the more art, yeah. And what about you, Michael? What would be your wish if you had all the money in the museum, of course, uh, all the money in the museum, what would you would be your wish? Yeah, uh, in addition to what Jess has said, um, more storage space. Um, this is something okay. that we, yes, we, we desperately need as well. More storage yeah. space and with regards to impact, um, if I may say a, a mobile museum, something that we could take wow. a museum on the road, something we could wow. take to other people where they are. We wow. are dreaming of the, the museum wow. on wheels. Of museum course. on wheels to go to the rural communities. Of yeah. course, of course, of course. So, I mean, patrons of museums from all over the world, if you are listening to this episode, <laughs> You have here an incredibly dynamic young museum, uh, full of uh, motivation, very well structured, very well thought. It's not something that, you know, came out of a pocket of somebody. No, it's very well thought. It was demonstrated clearly here. So here you are, uh, a museum that you can um, support, get in touch with Jess. I'm sure, uh, and Michael and the team, and I'm sure they will welcome you and uh, guide you through the museum and uh, welcome your support because, uh, you know, a, a, small, a young museum is like a baby, it needs nurturing, it needs, uh, you know, needs um, to be heard and to have a voice. And uh, I'm so glad that I could have the opportunity with you to use this UMAC channel to give you voice, international voice to all our members and to the international community of university museums. I mean, that's kind of the minimal of what, what we can do. And what a delight of a conversation we had. Thank you so much. Thank you to you. Thank, Thank you, you so much.